Hey guys, I'm Steven, the creator of Glitterville, and you're watching Handmade Holiday, the series about making DIY projects for all of your celebrations. And today, we're celebrating Halloween by making a Wacky Weber spider hand puppet. One of my favorite Halloweens ever was when I was little and my Nana and I made spider hand puppets. Now these are really easy to make and you don't even need a sewing machine. Now, to get started, you're going to trace your hand onto a piece of cardstock. Now, when you put it down to trace, make it really big because you don't want the glove to be too small once you sew it. The glove is much bigger than my hand. Now, once you've cut it, you're going to need some black fur. Now, you could also use a polar fleece or something that's not quite as shaggy, but this shagginess is what's gonna make the spider really fun. Now, when you get ready to lay your pattern out, you wanna make sure that the fur, if it has a grain to it, which means which way the fur is growing, you wanna make sure that that's pointed towards the end of your fingertips because we want the fur to go this way. Now I'm gonna lay my pattern onto the fur. Now I would generally wear my puppet on my right hand. So I wanna make sure this is the right, this is the left. So pin your pattern down to the fur with a few straight pins. Now once you've gotten it pinned, you're gonna need some really good sharp fabric scissors because fur is not the easiest thing to cut. Now I also like to be very still when I cut fur because Everywhere you cut, cuts all those little fibers into pieces and makes a really big fur ball on your table. So go slow and easy. Okay, so you can see here that I've, I've cut it out. And now, before I take it apart, I'm just gonna start pulling the fur along the edges. That way, the biggest mess on this piece will be behind us. Now, because of the fur and how it lays, once you cut it out, it's not always that pristine shape that you wanted from your pattern. I'm gonna take some scissors and just trim that a little bit. Because when we start pinning it together, we want those edges to be clean. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then run your hands over it just to pull out any loose fuzzes that are left and there's always some left. Okay, so this piece is pretty much ready. Now the first piece, we laid this way because that was the top of our right hand. Now for the other side, we're gonna flip the pattern over and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so I've cleaned up this piece. I'm gonna defer it just a little bit, lay both pieces aside and clean up your craft table. My table is clean again, at least for now. I'm gonna put them right sides together, and that means fur to fur, and then when you hold it up, that will be the wrong side on both sides. Does that make sense? Now, take your pins and start pinning them together, starting at the wrist and going all around the fingers. I like to tuck the fur in a little bit just so it doesn't get in the way when we're sewing it. And this takes a little bit more time, but it's totally worth it. So you're gonna start at the wrist and move around pinning it. You could completely do this on a sewing machine, but with fur, I find that it's more aggravating to do it on a machine than just sew it with your fingers. Looks pretty good. It's time to start sewing. Now for this, all you need is a hand needle and some thread. Any size needle will do but I love sewing and crafting with these cruel type needles that have a really big opening for your thread. I also like to use a, almost like a buttonhole thread, which is stronger than just regular sewing thread. Now I'm gonna use a double thread that I've knotted at the end, just so I make sure it's strong. And always when you start, pull your needle through to the knot over the edge and you wanna do this twice, just so it locks in the thread. That way when you're sewing the rest of it, it doesn't pull out at the beginning. And then as you go, take out your straight pins. 
And with your stitches, all you do is put the needle through the edge and go over it. When you get to the end, do the same thing that we did when we started by double locking that stitch, which means just go through it a couple of times. Once you've sewn it, it's time to turn it right side out, which means all the fur is on the outside. Now, sometimes turning things, especially little fingers, can be really tricky. So use a kitchen skewer to poke up inside of it and help you get them out. Okay, so we've got our glove or our spider's body. Let's test it for fit. Now, all we need is a spider head. To create the head, I've cut a piece of fabric that's about eight and a fourth by four and a half inches. Now, I'm gonna use a styrofoam ball that I put in the middle, like this. Now, if you wanted to actually do it as a stuffed animal type, you could make a ball and then stuff it with fiber fill. I'm gonna wrap it this way, and then I'm going to fold the end over and pull it over so it's really tight. Now, fur has a little bit of stretch to it, so it's actually pretty easy to cover the ball. Now, because I have foam on the inside, it's very easy to take a straight pin and hold it while I thread my needle to sew it up. So with a double thread and a knot at the end, I'm gonna sew the seam that goes straight across the ball. Now it's almost hard to see where you're even sewing, so you have to feel with your fingers every now and then to make sure you're still on the right track. And don't forget to take out the straight pin that you secured it with. Now when you reach the top edge, we're gonna flip it up on the side and you see the ball inside and the fur all around. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna do a running stitch all along this edge. Then pull your thread, close it up, do a couple of lock stitches and a knot at the end. Then turn your ball over and do the other end. Voila, a cute, fuzzy little spider head that now needs some eyes and a mouth. For the mouth, I'm gonna use chenille stems. So I wanna show you a trick that if you can't find a chenille stem exactly the color you want, you can do this trick to make it perfect. So I'm just gonna take a marker and I'm going to color the chenille stem. So you can see that instantly it becomes Halloween color and not just this sort of yellow orange. So you just color it on one side and give it a roll and do the other sides. Now, if you plan ahead, you can let your chenille stem dry, but I never do. So I take a paper towel, pick it up, and then sort of just wipe off any excess that may be there. And when I'm finished, I have a perfect Halloween orange chenille stem. Now you can wrap the ends around anything that you have, but I have a dowel here, which is perfect. And I want the edges of my mouth to sort of curl in a circle. So I'm gonna do both ends of my chenille stem like this, and then start shaping the smile of my spider. And once the smile is exactly how you want it, like this, we're gonna attach it to the ball with a few hand stitches. And you can see, he's already smiling. You can add some pins to the end just to hold it while you sew. Just go through the fur and over the stem. And sometimes fur gets caught in your stitch, so you wanna be sure and pull it out if that happens. Now on your last stitch, tie a knot and secure it. And then trim it off with the scissors. He has a mouth. Now, sometimes the fur sort of overgrows what you put in. So you'll wanna take your scissors and sort of trim around the mouth a little bit. Cause like I said before, the fur is always a moving target. For the eyes, you could use balls of clay, but I'm gonna use these hard foam balls that you find at the craft store. And I'm gonna cut them in half with a sharp knife. Then with a little bit of acrylic paint, you can add your iris, your pupil, and of course a white glint. And here are my finished ones. 
I put them onto a toothpick, but the toothpick is also going to help me secure them to the spider's head. Now, they're a little long, so I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to trim them back about halfway. And as I cut, I'm going to angle it so I have a point to go into the head. To attach them to the spider's head, I'm going to take the sharp end of a toothpick and put it into the foam like this, just to make a hole. Then I'm going to take my spider's eye and push it in. The only thing his face is missing is a nose. And to do that, I'm going to thread a needle in white thread and give him a few stitches. Now, as you work on his face, you may still have to trim him a little bit. But now, what he needs are some spider antennae at the top. To do those, I'm going to use chenille stems again. I'm going to curl them around my dowel so you get a spiral. And you'll need two of these. To attach the antennae, put a kitchen skewer into the top to make a hole, and then insert your chenille stem. To attach the head to the glove, I've used a floral pin like this, pushed up into the foam from inside the glove. This will hold it long enough for us to stitch it. It's in the right spot. Then, using your hand needle, stitch it to the glove. As a little extra touch, I'm gonna add a little bit of marabou just around his neck to add a little more fuzz to his fuzz. So you can tie it around the neck and then secure it with a stitch. And maybe one small piece for the top of his head. Lastly, I've made a bow tie out of two colors of felt and I'm gonna stitch this at his neck. And to finish his look, go over once more with a pair of scissors and fix any shape that may be a little off balance. So now, Wacky Weber is ready to put on a show. Now, I couldn't do a hand puppet without at least sharing a little bit of how to make a puppet theater out of a box. It's well on its way to be in a really fun stage. And I've also made it where I can raise the curtain like this and create lots of little scenery inside. I hope you enjoyed making this fuzzy wuzzy wacky Weber spider puppet just like I did and it makes you get creative. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade. And just remember, make it and make every day a holiday. See you later.